Jay Kiesling wants to turn plants into fuel for cars, trucks, and planes. Using the tools of biotechnology, he's taken genes from different sources and made them work together in microbes he can grow in the lab. These organisms grow really well on things like sugar. They'll grow very rapidly and double from a single organism all the way up to a culture of a billion organisms overnight. Once the organism grows up, we can turn on a switch inside the organism that we've built to produce a particular product. The first product of his microbe factories was a drug that cures malaria called artemisinin. Artemisinin is a natural product. It's produced by a plant. It was found many centuries ago to be useful for treating malaria. It's actually an ancient Chinese therapy. It's currently produced by harvesting these plants, growing up the plants, harvesting the plants, and extracting the drug. But that's an expensive, time-consuming process. We reasoned that we could take the genes from this plant and from other organisms, assemble them together in yeast and or E. coli and get those organisms to grow on sugar and produce the drug in plentiful supplies. Therefore, we'd reduce the price and increase the supply for people in the developing world. But Jay Kiesling didn't stop there. Artemisinin is a hydrocarbon. It's the same or very similar composition to diesel fuel. And since we had created a platform host that would produce large quantities of this anti-malarial drug, it was a matter of swapping out a couple of genes that produce the anti-malarial drug and swapping in a couple of genes that would produce the diesel fuel. The beauty of working with a microbe is that you can grow them in a test tube in the laboratory, or you can grow them in enormous tanks. It's a little bit of work between a test tube and a tank, but they scale beautifully. Kiesling's diesel-making bugs need sugar as food, and he now plans to get that sugar from an unlikely source. If you think about your shirt, a cotton shirt, that's all sugar, and yet it doesn't dissolve in the washing machine. Shirts don't dissolve for the same reason the stems and leaves of plants don't dissolve. The sugars they contain are linked together in long chains in the plant cell walls. So in Jay Kiesling's lab, scientists are devising ways to liberate the cell wall sugars from plants that are otherwise of little value, plants like switchgrass. Switchgrass is a native of the Plain States in the U.S. Um, it grows without a lot of fertilizer or water, and it has a high content of sugars that we can turn into fuels. So Jay Kiesling imagines a future in which plants that don't compete with agricultural crops for land provide the sugars for making fuels, a direct pipeline from grass to your tank.